So it's yeah. better than just doing it for like some random right. uh, company or brand that you don't care about because I've always been into skateboarding and everything. Right. My whole life, everybody from Jacksonville is, Kona is the oldest skate park in the country, which is yeah. super rad. And we should all be proud of that. You know what I mean? They're still running, still going. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. skating is a huge thing. You know, even Limp Bizkit, Fred Durst skated. You know what I mean? Like tracing the music through the skating history of this town goes way back. So it was awesome. Tony Hawk, he's a cool dude. Thanks, man, for hooking us up. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was good to meet him. First time I met him, he already knew my name. Really? Pretty rad. Yeah. You know, pretty rad feeling to walk That's up to Tony feeling. Hawk. And he's like, hey, Ronnie. I was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even really say anything. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So. Did you say you want to skate? I will never, I will never skate around that guy. He's no. too good. I'd be embarrassed. I'm way too embarrassed. I'm more of like a low-key kind of skater. He's a professional. Yeah, so. that's true. But I, I, I would still want to just for the kicks, you know? I would just watch him. Yeah. Just, that would be funner than me <laughs> attempting to even compare. That's so. true. This yeah. is true. So. Well, we've got... Um, Especially, I'd like to know how you feel, especially since you released your last record uh, independently or on your own. Um, the music business is is changed big time in the last few years. I mean, all the rules have changed with crazy. downloading uh, music. Uh, how do you feel about uh, selling your music now in an environment where the music is almost virtually free? Right. Well, how do I feel about selling my music in an environment? where basically everybody can just get music for free? Good question. And the answer to that is we have faith in our fans. And that is how you tell the difference between bands who really have fans and bands who are basically cool for a moment. And also another part of that, in my opinion, is writing incredible songs. If you write songs that are so good that people are worth the pain, you know, they, it's worth it to them to pay money for it, then they're going to pay money for it. If you write songs that are mediocre and you just push them out as fast as you can because whatever reason, whether it's personal decisions, band decisions, label decisions, management decisions, there's many things that can screw everything up. But you don't take the time to write that incredible song, every track, not one or two, every song needs to be the song. Every song on the album needs to smash. It needs to dominate. Or it shouldn't have made the album. And somewhere, I think in the last 10 years, bands have lost sight of that. In my opinion, I place the blame directly on the bands. Why not? Everyone else has blamed everyone but them since then, so let's have a little responsibility for once. If our record flops, I'll take responsibility for it. I'll say maybe we should have wrote a better record. Our record isn't going to flop. It's good. And I'm not worried about it because our fans are awesome. And they're going to buy it. Why? Because they like our music. That's why. <laughs> so I think that's the number one strategy. The number two strategy is know that you're not going to get everybody. So, most people who are internet savvy, they're not going to go to iTunes because they're already internet savvy. Think about it. The, you know, the problem, like, it, it circles and circles and circles. Some people are going to go online and actually buy it on iTunes because they're honorable people and thank you for doing that. That's rad. Everybody else is going to steal it. We all know this, you know what I mean? So how are we counteracting that? Cool, new, different ideas. We've got one concept uh, we're working on right now, other than the music, which is number one, first and foremost, um, where we're having this uh, technology called Push, which a lot of people aren't familiar with. But basically, when you buy our actual CD, the real one, so if you burn it for somebody, this won't work. It only works with a CD that you buy from a store. You'll be able to put it in your computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC, and it'll automatically take you to one website, which is an open forum website controlled completely by the band with content constantly renewed all for free all through my filter specifically so for instance what does that mean sounds complicated well look at it this way you take your cd the new red jumpsuit cd which is called lonely road by the way you pop that in your computer all of a sudden a website pulls up that you didn't even have to pull up it does it on its own you just hit enter boom it'll pull up on the screen all of a sudden there's our video for free. Download it right now. Why? Because we said you can for X amount of weeks. So all of a sudden, if you're the first person to buy the record before anybody else you know, you're already going to be getting free extra stuff all of the time and continually for the rest of basically until we have a new record. That's what we decided. You know, so basically, if you buy our CD, um, you're going to get so much free stuff by the time it's done that you would probably think it was absurd not to buy it. 
Well, that's, that's, that's great. I really like the, that concept. Um, speaking about writing, um, what kind of writing process do you use? I mean, do you write all the lyrics? Do you write as a band? Is it just you and Duke? I've always written all the lyrics for every song that we've ever had, from the ones that you haven't heard yet to the ones that haven't been written yet <laughs> to the ones that How are all How did you write that then if they weren't written? Uh, yeah. Well, I got a lot in my head. <laughs> I have to think it out here. The concept. And then write it yeah. and then play it. But it's an interesting little couple series of events. The band has always jammed the music. So it's changed, as we were talking about earlier, with members, when they come in and out, it's interesting. It's, it's funny for me to watch how it changes a little bit. But the songs will never change, because I write consistent. the songs. Keeps it consistent, if you're, you're it, the, yeah. But it also keeps it fresh. You know, I, I played with one guitar player for a couple of years, and then he left. So that means there's a different type of style of guitar now yep. that me and Duke are working with. And so that'll change it, spice the meatball up a little bit. And then that guitar player left. What do you know? Big surprise, right? Here comes in a new guy who thinks he's incredible. Gotcha. Well, let's see what kind of thing you're dealing with. And then, you know, the way me and Duke like to do it is we try to blend with people. We don't like to steamroll over anybody. We want what they have also. We want to bring that in. We want everybody to have ownership. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we've been able to change our sound so easily, um, because we just go with it. We don't really force anything on anybody. We listen to whatever riff they might have, um, you know, because a riff is a riff. It's not copyrightable. Not a lot of people don't know that. It's a fact. A riff is a riff. They've all been done before, believe it or not. So don't think that you're so righteous that you invented this chord progression because you didn't. Once people realize that, you realize that what it's really all about is finding a style. What it's really all about is finding a, like a way to jam a song. And then once you get into that kind of mode, you can write a record. And then you just have to have either a songwriter or, in our case, there's me, who's the singer. Uh, in a lot of cases, the singer is the songwriter, but not every case. Look at Neil Peart. He writes all the lyrics for Rush, one of the best bands ever. So, it depends on the band, but whoever writes the lyrics and melodies is a songwriter. And, you know, as far as that's concerned, you know, whatever. That's how it's going to be. That's how we meet. That's Duke, by the way. That's how we roll. So, basically, just to finish up that question, we jam out songs as a band, as a group, and then I write the lyrics and melodies. And that, that's when it becomes a song. Before Very that, good. it's just a jam. Right. It's just another jam. You know what I mean? Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. What else? Anything else you want to add to say to the fans or hmm. to... Anything else I want to say? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything you want to say? Anything Talk about politics, say, religion, yeah. I don't know. Barack Obama. <laughs> <clears throat> Barack. Your family, you know. How do I okay. feel about Barack Obama? Oh, oh yeah. Don't, don't, put him, don't put him out there on that spot. I'll tell you what. I guess you make one He's the next president of the year. United States. <laughs> That's important. Give him a chance. That's all I gotta say. Be, yeah. an, be an American about it. Man up. He won fair and square. That's all there is to it. That's why I feel about it. Good. Hey, whatever. I don't care. I support every president. I'm patriotic to hell and back. Trust me. My little brother just got back from Iraq, so that changed my mm. whole perspective on life. You know. So I mean, as long as I, I say, as long as we're being pro-American about whatever we're saying, then fine then that's good, you know, because at this point, there's, there's plenty of other people in the world who hate us, and we don't need to hate ourselves. And, Absolutely. You know, he's got a tough enough job fixing all, all the crap he's dealing with, yeah. walking into whoever would have got elected. It was going to be rough for them. So I feel for the guy. I think he's going to do a good job. We'll see. Time will tell. Yep. But uh, if you don't support him, then he never had a fair shot. I do believe that. You know, So that's the responsible thing to do. How about cameos on the music? Do you have ever have anybody? You say? know, I, we, re we reached out to a couple people for cameos, and... It's such a weird thing because we didn't know how to do it, and there isn't really like a set way to do it, and it didn't really pan out. So there you go. No cameos. It's only just us. Wah, wah, unfortunately. <laughs> but we tried. We tried. I guess maybe we weren't cool enough for some of the people we wanted, but... Oh. Uh, but you know, you get Tony Hawk to do a skating thing while you're he playing probably on done stage. Something. Yeah. Put a ramp in, right? Yeah. And have, hey, uh, you know what? You're in cool. Middleburg. You're doing some Southern Rock. I called Johnny Van Zandt. You know, oh, I'll, I'll give you his number. <laughs> I'll take yeah, it. Right I don't have it, actually. Uh, really? That would have been a good idea. Wish I would have thought of it. Thank you for your time no and problem. your insights. Yeah, I appreciate good. it. Hope you guys got and what you have want. a great show today. Thanks, man. Yeah. Absolutely. See you next time.